A while ago I made a video about a Philips LED lamp that had failed and what actually happened is I turned the power on, the light switch, and there was a sort of cracking noise and the lamp failed. And I did an autopsy in the lamp but it turned out a fuse had failed inside it. And today I turned another light switch on, there was a cracking noise and another Philips lamp failed and I know it's exactly the same thing. It's not the fault of the lamp, it's the fault of the switch because the switch was arcing inside and this is a really old... Well, it's a relatively old MK switch, um, but the, a lot of the of this style of switch in the house have that problem with uh, arcing and crackling after a while, so I've been progressively changing them. This also gave me the opportunity to uh, crack the two-way switching, which was, which was wrong in this one. Uh, so let's open this one and uh, see what's uh, making them arc. So I'll just take these two screws out, see if there's any things that ping out. I suppose that technically speaking, if it's just contact corrosion, they could have been cleaned, but I just thought I'll change them for modern switches. It's such a better idea. It looks very corroded inside. Right, let's uh, get these screws out and pop the little inserts out and take a look at the contacts. This may be down to humidity, it may be down to plaster dust. This building, I, I'm not really sure the whole history of this building. I think it's been fairly dampish in the past, because certainly when I uh, came here, one of the first things I did was introduce uh, dehumidifiers in to keep the place dry. It's just a, uh, it's in a part, it's, well, it's on an island close to the sea in the Irish Sea, and it's just a very humid place. It's very green and lush and it rains a lot, and cold at times, but cold's good. So let's uh, get these out and see if I can just push these out. Are they going to come out? Actually, you know, maybe they're riveted in. Oh, they are riveted in. They've been riveted in in situ, which means they're not so easy to get out. Oh, that's a bit annoying. Let's just use v brute force and ignorance then, because technically speaking, oh, I can see the contacts are looking pretty crappy in there. Can I get these out? In any this is not very easy to disassemble. Right, OK, let's... Uh, Bend that contact up then. Even that's not bending up. This isn't going too well. I need long nose pliers. Yeah, the contacts are looking distinctly uh, corroded and grubby looking. I think it is just age though. That particular uh, light, I very rarely turn it on because it's at the other end of this room. And I just, uh, that's where I used to uh, do a lot of the sort of filming on the, the old wood, round wooden table. But not any longer, or the contacts really are just pitted and burnt. I'm not sure why though. Is it pitted or is it just corrosion? Because I don't, I don't think they've really seen much of a load. Um, I think it probably is just time and age that they have. Yeah, they're just, uh, it's wiping off and they're clean. So I think that is just oxidation of those. So um, what was up with the uh, two-way switching? Hold on, let me get a, uh, let me get, well, I'll just bring in this bit of paper here and draw on the back of this. There are two ways to do two-way switching. Well, probably more than two ways, but uh, these are the ways that uh, I do it. Let's uh, choose a side that's a wee bit more visible. One of the most common approaches is the old, let's go with the old-fashioned one, and that's what this one was. You've got your uh, light switch, which can switch between two contacts. And one of the old-fashioned ways of doing it was to have a feed coming down, say, live coming in, and then the two links going across, the two strappers, and then you'd have that going up to the uh, lamp and the neutral would just go to the other end of the lamp. And that's how this one was configured, except uh, they changed a the switch for a new one, and instead of putting the two strappers across the uh, L1 and L2, they'd actually put them across one of the contacts like this, so it was basically just bridging out strappers, and it meant that uh, when you turned one switch, you could use one switch to turn it on and off, but if you turned it off the other switch, then nothing worked after that. But that's fixed now. The more modern approach, the, the, my preferred approach, is to bring uh, the switch wire down, so you've got the live going to the um, contact like this. You've got the switch, I'll just draw it as before, But this time, all you do is you run a three-core cable between them, like that. 
and then that's the switch to the lamp. So you get your neutral through the lamp, not really left much space here, and to the other connection. That it, basically that means you've just got a two core switch wire coming down, feed down, switch feed up, and then just the three core between the switches. It's just an easier way of doing it, I think. It's a neater way of doing it, and keeps all the cables together. But uh, that's the way it was, and it was wrong. But uh, it's fixed now. So uh, this lamp will almost certainly. It's not that easy to repair, if I recall correctly. It's a bit. Uh, let's uh, open it. There's no harm in trying to open it. Let's see if I can stab myself, that would be a good idea. That comes out. Uh, there's the aluminum, oh, oh, you know what, yeah, this, uh, I, d I don't think this heat sink comes out easily, but uh, let's give it a go anyway. And we'll see if that same little fuse has failed. The reason the fuse would have failed is that in a capacitive dropper, you've got your, um, say you've got the live coming in and uh, you've got the, Capacitor and then the bridge rectifier and then the LEDs. That's the simplest sort of arrangement. Uh, what actually happens is that when something arcs, this capacitor and arrangement results in quite a high current because it acts like an interference suppressor. It passes that high noise. Instead of seeing that slow 50 or 60 hertz sine wave, it sees a lot of sharp spikes and it passes it all through the LEDs. Uh, and it just results in it passing suddenly a lot more current than it normally should. And that's why they've got the little fuse in there to actually protect against that. So am I going to get any joy hiking this out? Am I going to get the aluminum plate out? I think the aluminum plate may not easily come out. Oh, no, it's coming out, it's coming out. But is it going to be trapped in by the wires at the back? There's a circuit board in the back of it. I do have a video showing this being taken, uh, one of these being taken to bits completely. What Bought at the same time. These have been basically inserted in making it very difficult to repair it. The only way to actually get that out is to... They've fed the two wires down, then they've crimped with little pins here. So the only way to get the wires out is to pop those off. I don't think the lamp's going back in now. And that releases it. There's this little fusible resistor, it says 10 ohm, and uh, I reckon that will not be reading 10 ohms anymore. Let's uh, bring a meter in and meter it. So it's, this is on conveniently on the 200 ohm mark. Let's uh, meter that out. It's open circuit. Yeah, same thing, that little fusible resistor fails when there's a bit of arcing. That's a shame, really, because otherwise these have been pretty good lamps. But uh, there you go, um, crappy old switches that have just uh, corroded or, or just generally oxidised over time, causing arcing because they don't get used an awful lot, and that caused failure of the capacitive dropper-based LED lamp.